I always think the tench are being quite visual feeders. I mean, I've watched them a lot swimming around the edge and they'll see bits of bait, like corn and stuff on the bottom and go, oh, and go down and get it. Do you think the same? Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah. They do sort of pick around, I think, sort of pick bits off they can see. Rather than yeah. cart where they'll just get their heads down and just keep feeding, I think yeah. the tench do move about and are picking off bit bits picky. here. And, yeah, 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 a lot more picky on that yeah. side of things. Excellent. And is, does that reflect in the rigs you use for them? Um, yeah, tending to use fairly short hook lengths, um, not not stupidly short, but sort of six, seven inches typically yeah. um, on a braid, maybe a little bit shorter if I'm using like stiff rigs yeah. um, on a nylon hook leg. Right. Rubber casters on there. Right, no uh, real bait at all, just, just the artificials? No, if you told me ten years ago I'd be chucking bits of rubber out, then I probably wouldn't have believed you, but yeah. I've had so much success on them, certainly for species like tench and bream, carp, yeah. um, sort of quite happy now just using bits right. of rubber. Um, plus you've got the buoyancy as well, so it's, the bait's actually sitting up yeah. off the bottom, which is going back to what we were saying earlier with the tench being yeah, visual feeders, yeah. it just makes it stand out a bit more. Yeah, the rubber baits, you do seem to just pick up more of the bigger fish. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, even, even on the tench water, I'm sort of mainly fishing. I mean, there's one of the anglers on there, he uses real maggots, and yeah. he does, he picks up the bigger fish, but he tends to pick up a lot of smaller fish right. as well. Yeah. Whereas with this, the average size does tend to be a lot higher. Yeah. Um, Plus, plus they're crayfish proof. If you've got water with crayfish in, right. like the one off fish it yeah. has got, um, you know, you, at least you know you've got a hook bait out there yeah. for yeah. length Ready of time. Yeah. What sort of hook that is that you're using? Um, that's, a, that's a size 12 um, Corum S3. Um, it's barbless because uh, the lake we're on here is obviously barbless only. Um, they're ver very good hooks. I mean, they keep the, keep the point well. You can quite often catch five or six fish on the same right. hook, no yeah. problem. Um, which when you've got them feeding you in your swim's good because you don't have to keep changing rigs yeah, and yeah. messing around too much. Strong as well, I mean I use down to a size 14 um, yeah. and even on bigger fish or accidental carp that sometimes hook, have not had a problem yet. Yeah, I guess because you've got an extra bit of buoyancy because of the rubber bait you can you can get away with a slightly bigger hook as well can't you? Yeah definitely, yeah, it does counter the sort of weight of the hook so yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, I think they're just taking it in by accident anyway yeah. when they're coming along mooching around, sucking yeah. everything up. It um, just happens to be the first thing that's in front of them because it is set off the bottom. Yeah. Um, plus, with uh, using a method ball around the lead, so once that breaks down, you've pretty much got your hook bait sat almost right on top of to that. Yeah, yeah, right no, next to perfect, it. it. And as you said before, quite a short hook length, not, not extremely so, but quite short by, by most people's standards. Yeah, it's, re yeah, it's quite short for... Um, I mean, I tend to use reasonably long hairs. I mean, it's probably certainly no shorter than what I've got here, which is yeah. good, probably a good inch from the, um, the hook. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes sort of two inches. So you, you want a hook link that's long enough they can actually get yeah. the bait in rather than um, picking it up and sort of, it's really short hook link. They won't be able, you haven't got enough movement there that they can right. actually suck the bait in gotcha. properly. Eight, 10 pound line for using on that. So some of the Preston. Yeah, some of the um, power line power there, yeah. Yeah, nine pound. Nine there. pound odd that one is, yeah. yeah. 0.21. Yeah. Perfect for this. Um, I wouldn't want to go much lighter. Certainly not for bigger fish if yeah. you're on a big fish water. Yeah, um, you've got plenty of weed and, and yeah, stuff Yeah, if you've got like weed that, and gravel to... bars coming into play as well. Yeah. You... yeah, and your lead's a bit different as well to, to what most people would use. Yes, yeah, um, just an inline one. Um, it's got a coating on it which it blends in fairly well with it, but not too obvious on the bottom. Yeah. Um, plus the shape of it means you can actually mould mould a method mix around it right. quite yeah. well. It actually grips it's all the nobbles on, on it. Coat. It grips on it. I mean, a lot of the coated leads they've got a smooth, very yeah, smooth finish, finish on them, yeah, which it slides off. Wet, it's actually almost. designed and yeah. to slide off. So yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. That's a really sort of neat little setup there. It's pretty tangle proof, I guess, particularly when you've got the method ball around it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, for when the tench are coming along and just sort of picking at baits, that's, that's going to nail them every time, isn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you never, never really get tangles with it at all. Yeah. Like I say, I mean, sort of fold it up inside the method ball sometimes right. as well. So yeah. it's even, even with braid. I mean, you can get away with braided hook links as well, which is used quite a bit. Um, and again, it doesn't tangle because of the method ball. Cause yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, spot on. That's great.